Hello, let us look at the solution for question number 21, set 1, Civil Engineering, Gate 2021. The equation of deformation is derived to be y is equal to x square minus xl for a beam as shown in the figure. The curvature of the beam at mid span is what is asked and we are expected to report our answer in integer. We are given a simply supported beam with the origin of the coordinate axis at one of its ends with the x and y directions as shown and we are expected to calculate the curvature at mid span and report it. Candidates are encouraged to watch the NPTEL lecture cited below where this topic is handled in more detail. However, we will be looking at some fundamentals as we go along in solving this problem. Let us look at some fundamentals about curvature. Let us consider a curve which has a radius r and a center at O. Since r is large, it has been shown using broken lines. And let us say that the arc length ds subtends an angle d theta at the center. If we were to zoom into this area, this is what we will be able to see. Taking the coordinate axis x and y to be oriented this way, curvature of a curve is defined as 1 by its radius. From here, we can see that r d theta is basically ds. So from simple manipulation 1 by r, we can get as d theta by ds, which is nothing but the curvature. For small infinitesimal dx, we can approximate ds instead of an arc, we can approximate it to be a straight line. In which case, we can write tan theta is equal to dy by dx. And we can comfortably invert this to get theta as tan inverse of dy by dx. Since theta is in terms of x, and in order to derive curvature, we need to differentiate theta with respect to s, we would be going for the chain rule. In which case, we require a relation between ds and dx. As we have already discussed that ds can be approximated as a straight line, we can comfortably write ds square is equal to dx square plus dy square by using the Pythagoras theorem. And by subsequent manipulation, we can get ds by dx as root over 1 plus dy by dx, the whole square. Now we have the expression for the curvature as d theta by ds and by chain rule we can write this as d theta by dx into dx by ds. As we have previously derived theta as tan inverse of dy by dx by simple differentiation of theta with respect to x we can get the following expression as 1 by 1 plus dy by dx the whole square into d2y by dx square. This is basically coming from the standard form. The derivative of tan inverse of b is given by db by 1 plus b square. Now that we have obtained this expression, we just need to obtain this expression in order to calculate the curvature. We have already derived ds by dx as root over 1 plus dy by dx the whole square. Hence, we just need to calculate the reciprocal of this equation which comes out with a minus sign at the exponent. Now we have derived both these quantities, hence we can comfortably multiply them in order to get the curvature and the product comes out to be this big expression which we can further simplify. As we can see that this is to the power 1 and the same expression is coming with a power of half, hence we can add the exponents and finally we will get curvature as d2y by dx square upon 1 plus dy by dx the whole square raised to the power 3 by 2. Now in case where deformations are small, the slope will also be small. In which case dy by dx can be approximated as 0. And substituting that into the curvature equation, we can approximately get the curvature as d2y by dx square. Hence, we have derived a simpler expression for curvature as d2y by dx square which is applicable when the deformations are small. However, we are yet to see the sign convention for the curvature for which we will be using geometric arguments. Let us consider this curve again and we have already derived that curvature is d2y by dx square which can also be written as d by dx of dy by dx. Now we know that dy by dx is basically related to theta. Now at this point, if the slope of the curve is theta, at this point we can see that it would be theta plus d theta. With our coordinate axis oriented this way, we can see 
that the positive z axis would go into the plane of the paper this implies that all clockwise rotations will have their axis aligned with the positive z axis hence all clockwise rotations are positive for this coordinate system. Thus, we can see that if this is a positive quantity, theta plus d theta is a greater positive quantity. Hence, we can conclude that as x increases, theta increases. We can see that d theta by dx is a positive quantity and dx by ds is again a positive quantity by virtue of geometry. Hence, we can see that curvature is positive for this case. Using the same geometric arguments, we can calculate the sign of the curvature for any given orientation of x and y. Let us come back to the problem at hand. Now we are required to find the curvature at the mid span and we have already derived the expression for curvature as given here. We have also been given the expression for y as x square minus xl. It is to be noted that the y orientation is of opposite nature to the one we saw in our derivations. Now that y is given as x square minus xl, we can simply differentiate this with respect to x in order to get 2x minus l. Since we have to calculate the curvature at mid span, we can substitute x is equal to l by 2, in which case we get dy by dx coming to be 0. Hence, this whole term in the denominator goes to 0. Further, we can differentiate this equation again in order to get the second derivative of y is equal to 2. Substituting this into the formula for curvature, we get curvature as 2. Although we have got the answer as positive 2, let us use our geometric arguments as before to verify this answer. We can see that in this case, x is oriented this way and y is oriented this way. The plus z axis is out of the plane of the paper. Hence, any rotation that has its axis along plus z would be positive. Therefore, we can conclude that clockwise rotations are negative and anticlockwise rotations are positive for this coordinate system as given. Further, we can see that at x equals 0, the beam undergoes a clockwise rotation which is negative and as we approach the mid span, the slope changes to 0. Hence, we can clearly see that as x increases, theta increases from a negative quantity to 0. Hence, we can safely conclude that curvature must be greater than zero, which is in line with what we have got. Another thing to be noted that as dy by dx at x equal to l by 2 came out to be zero, there was no ambiguity as to which formula of curvature to use. However, if the question were to ask us to calculate the curvature at some other points other than l by 2, dy by dx would be non-zero. In such a case, we can expect that the question would clearly specify whether to consider the deformations as large or consider the deformations as small and use this formulation. However, since in this case we can see that dy by dx at x equal to l by 2 is coming out to be 0, considering and ignoring large deformation in this case is immaterial and leads to the same answer. Hence, our answer is plus 2. Thank you.